Okay, let's say you came up with the letter of the day C, and that's your guess for all the problems you don't know. Well, what if I told you that there was a better way for guessing on ACT's math section? So let's approach three different types of problems in a couple different strategies. The first is to hijack the figure. On these types of problems where the ACT or SAT test gives you a figure, they'll often tell you that the figure is not drawn to scale, but nearly all of the time it will be drawn to scale. In this question, in order to actually solve the problem, we have to use trig. But what if we were to just use the figure to approximate the actual length of this side CD? Well, using the side 80, which we know is six inches long, we can take that approximately using our finger or maybe a pencil, lay that next to the side CD, and we can see that it's a little bit more than half. So it's probably around 3.6. Since AD is six, half of that is three, a little bit more, we get to 3.6. Also, a quick tip, K, which is the answer choice that we'll say cannot be determined from the given information, is usually wrong. Statistically, each answer choice should be right around 20% of the time, but this cannot be determined from the given information is actually less than 20% of the time it will be correct. So you have a higher chance of just guessing one of these numbers and using a strategy like hijacking the figure. Let's get into the next strategy through problem number two. In this problem, we have two different triangles and we see that one of the sides is in a ratio of two to five. And so in order to get the other side, we can approximate using this ratio. Two to five tells us that one is about twice as long as the other. So if we take the value of five, we multiply that by two, we get 10, but we know that it's just slightly bigger. So we can get to 12.5. And usually the ACT will have a couple answer choices in between or over that, so it doesn't allow you to approximate in this way. But there are oftentimes questions like this where you can use approximation, not only to guess if you have no idea how to solve the problem, but also just to approximate to save a lot of time on your test because the ACT math, as we know, is very stringent on time. And three, math problem number three. Let's say we have this problem right here. You can use your process of elimination, but in an interesting way, by eliminating answers that are too obvious. As you can see here, it asks us to figure out what Tom needs to get on the sixth test in order to get an average score of 80 points if he currently has 78 points on five tests. Well, how can we solve this? One way is to eliminate obvious answers. It's not going to be 82 because that's kind of an obvious answer, 78, 82, the average would be 80. Of course, if you were just to think about it from the perspective of calculating a mean, that's also obviously wrong. But by eliminating the obvious answer here, you get rid of 82 and using your other process of elimination by knowing that he needs to score a pretty high amount in order to raise that average if he's already taken five of them, you can eliminate C, D, and E and get into a 50-50 situation, which sets you up for a lot more success. So given all of this, I do want to say that you should aim for getting everything right if you can. But of course, time is a factor. Time exists. So ultimately, sometimes people have to guess. And that's why you can use the ultimate ACT guessing strategy on your math section. Good luck. Watch the next video on the screen, which teaches you how you can get a 36 on your ACT test.